What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to test out CXBX Reloaded, the Xbox emulator on the new Ultra Tiny Ryzen PC that I just built. If you haven't seen the build video, I'll leave a link in the description or you can click on the card that's on screen now. Basically what we have here is a mini emulation PC. It's seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches by 2.4 inches tall. It's powered by an AMD Ryzen 2200G APU clocked at 3.5 gigahertz, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz dual channel RAM, and of course the GPU is the built-in Vega 8. So I went with the 2200G because of the price, it's only $99, you can actually get them for about $95 on Amazon. Power consumption and heat. So the 2200G is great for emulation. We're gonna go ahead and test out the CXBX Reloaded Xbox emulator. I also have several other videos on the 2200G. I made a bunch when this initially launched. I've tested Wii U, PS3, and a ton of different emulators and PC games. I'll leave links to those videos in the description. So CXBX Reloaded is an original Xbox emulator. This has been out for a little while. It's come a long way since the initial release and it's only getting better and better. I recently did a video on the same emulator running on a much more powerful PC. Now that PC had an i7-4790K clocked at 4.6 gigahertz, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 1066 gigabyte GPU. I only have a handful of Xbox games right now and only a few of them worked in the emulator. They ran at 60 FPS in both games that I'm about to show you, there were graphical glitches. Now that PC I just mentioned cost me about $1300 when it was built. It was built a long time ago. Still does the job for me. This Ryzen build was much cheaper. You can get away with building a system with the same specs here for about $350 to $400. Now mine costs a lot more because I wanted that super small form factor. I have $540 into this mini build, but if you were to go with a mid-sized tower case and a full-size power supply, you could get away for a lot cheaper. First up, I'm gonna be testing out Dead or Alive 3. It is in window mode right now. It will go full screen in just a second. Everything is stock with this APU. Stock CPU clock and stock GPU clock, but I do plan on overclocking it and see if we can gain a little performance if we're lagging. I do have fraps running only for the FPS. I'm recording all of this on a separate PC, so it's not affecting CPU or GPU performance whatsoever. This is a very CPU intensive emulator. As you can see, we've almost maxed out at 100% in all four cores, and we're not using much GPU power here. So a fast CPU is a must have for CXBX. Let's see if we can get a constant 60 FPS at the stock 3.5 gigahertz that this CPU puts out. I'm not sure if we're going to, I already see it dipping down a little bit. And remember, there will be glitches in this game. There's gonna be graphical glitches. This is very early in development for this emulator. I'm gonna hold the controller with one hand for just a second here, so I'm just gonna be kicking. I'm impressed with this. We're not quite at 60, but if I had fraps turned off, I wouldn't notice it at all. I wouldn't notice that I was below 60. So I've noticed that different stages affect performance. I'm gonna go full screen real quick. The FPS has dipped in this stage a little bit. There's some more stuff going on in the background and the floor. If you check out Helena's costume, you notice it's all glitched out. That is not this system, it's the emulator itself. I have tested this on four different systems. Every one of them give me this issue. So I did want to test this with a little bit of an overclock running. Now, I usually overclock through the BIOS, but lately I've noticed that Ryzen Master and the 2200G work really well together. I'm going to overclock directly from this application here. It's in real time. As soon as I click apply, we'll see that CPU jump up. I'm going to go to 3.8 gigahertz on the CPU, and I'll even up the GPU a little bit. Watch it here. It'll go right up. Now, we're not quite at 3.8 gigahertz. I noticed that Ryzen Master is a little bit off. We're only at 3.73. And let's see if that made a difference. 
So this is a really glitchy stage here. I'm going to go ahead and restart to the menu and we'll use the same exact character. Hopefully we can get that same first stage we had earlier just to see if performance was increased any. Not the same stage, but this should do. So we're at 3.73 gigahertz from 3.57 and it looks like it helped out. We're at 58, 59, 60 FPS, more on the 60 side here. I'm actually really surprised that the CPU is able to play CXBX this well. I thought we'd be in the 40 FPS range with this game. Okay, so the next stage, like I said, different levels will affect performance. We're back down 53, 54 FPS. And even if I go to window mode instead of full screen, we're going to be at that same FPS. It's not affecting performance going to full screen. I'm going to test one more game real quick. Jet Set Radio Future. I'm going to go to the stop clocks. We'll overclock again while we're in gameplay. So I've reset the clocks. We're back at stock clocks with the GPU and the CPU, 3.57 gigahertz. On the other computer that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this ran at 60 FPS constantly, no matter what I was doing. I see this dip as low as 35, 38 FPS, so it's definitely not playable on the Ryzen. Let's see if we can help it out by overclocking the GPU and the CPU. We're going to go a little higher on the CPU this time. I'll go to game mode, and I'm going to jack this up to 3.85 gigahertz. Not sure if that's going to really get us there, though. And I'll up this GPU a little bit. I want to be at a true or a little over 3.8 gigahertz on the CPU, so I need to apply. And I'm still not quite at 3.8. We're going to go up a little higher with it. I'll just bring the slider to 3.9 and see what it does here. 3.82 gigahertz? Sounds good to me. Let's test it out. I need to shut this down. We're still at the same clocks, even though I shut down Ryzen Master, but I had to unlock my frap so we could see the FPS on the game. I just saw it dip down to about 46 FPS, but it seems to be holding a little steadier. We're not quite at 60, and I don't think we're going to get there with this CPU, at least not at this time. CXBX Reloaded is very early in development. Over time, it will work better on lower-end systems like this 2200G here. But with this build of CXBX, it's just not going to work out. Maybe the next one, you never know. Either way, the 2200G will play tens of thousands of retro games. It does Wii and GameCube at 4K. It'll even play some Wii U games and PS3 games. It also handles PS2 very well, and pretty much anything under that. So if you want to play N64 using Moopin or Project 64, it's going to work fine on here. And then you also have the ability to play PC games. This will actually do GTA 5 on normal settings at 55 to 60 FPS. And if you don't mind gaming at 30 FPS, you can lock 30 FPS on GTA 5, mess around with the settings high and medium mixed, you can get 30 all day long and it looks beautiful. So that's it for this video guys. I really appreciate you watching. Don't forget to check out the build video and some of my older videos on the 22 and the 2400G. I've made a ton of them. I'll leave a playlist in the description. If you could hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.